in the future, there, is, there will be kind of the many AI agents that is run by the each person, and they have to get kind of network because they have to work with them. They have to work with the another AI agent. That's the reason why you guys are so saying about AI agent networks. Yes. So in that case, I think the most people think is they are worried about kind of security. And in that case, mm -hmm. there are so many informations are going to get into that kind of AI agent. And that AI may know many things about these people, maybe about the, their social numbers, maybe about their bank account. Several things are in this AI. But I think we are going to worry about their data security. What yes. do you think about these problems? Yes, it's a really good question. And it's something that people keep, you know, asking us all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it is indeed something that is going to be quite difficult to tackle for, let's say, companies like OpenAI, companies like, like Anthropic, those large language models, because they tell you that they don't train on your data, but I'm not sure as of how far they can actually really control it because it's still a super large model and it's supposed to learn from every interaction it has with the user uh, without disclosing or without you know putting out harmful information so actually you know like there are many other problems that are related to privacy and security like copyright laws and copyright protection and so on right so you see that uh, companies like OpenAI and companies that use OpenAI to provide services, they're getting sued all the time. Um, I don't believe that most of the time they will they will actually lose the lawsuit because it's still such a new technology and there are no uh, very well you know, defined rules there. People working on it in, in the governments and in politics. Um, there are in politics actually people that are really against AI and really trying to push for you know, like not being able to use AI, but they're not going to win. They're not going to be able to, you know, set foot on the ground because it's already here. You know, you, the technology is not just going to go away, right? So that's why we also said in the white paper, you know, security and privacy is one of the key foundational pillars that we are building on. So now you know that we have to two aspects of the network. We have the blockchain aspect and the network communication layer, right? So we need to work with both traditional encryption uh, strategies and we need to work with blockchain. So we have a combination of both. So for example, one of them is like a homomorphic encryption. It's kind of like a, a, an encryption technique um, that requires the, you know, um, computation and encryption data to be um, more safe, right? So that's why we use homomorphic encryption. Mm -hmm. And this means that the data can still be processed and analyzed uh, and utilized, but it will not be exposed in its raw form. So it means like you might send me something, I might send you something, and we can still analyze it. Our computer systems, our computation can still happen but we don't know uh, what it actually is that you send me, right? It's, it's similar to CK technology. So probably we'll also use CK technology and then we'll use, you know, user data handling standards like SMPC or um, zero knowledge proofs. So then it, we will also have, you know, like this kind of data integrity checks. So using um, cryptographic hashing and then digital signature. So these agent IDs, but also you need to verify that it, it, this is your data and uh, where it com came from, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, so that's one of the, you know, that's are, those are some of the things that we are going to incorporate or incorporating in the uh, network layer. But what we cannot handle really is like, you know, interaction with the large language model. Like we don't have a say in that, you know, like people that will build these agents or you, you will build your agent, you also need to think about security. You also need to think about what kind of information are you going to um, disclose to your agent. So that's why, the, again, the decentralization com comes in, right? Because you can remain anonymous, basically. You have an agent ID, it has nothing to do with your ID. You have, um, you have a nickname, it has nothing to do with your name. 
you have uh, tokens in your in your in your wallet they're not linked to your bank account right so again you will have a, another layer of not only transparency but also security mm -hmm. because yes we can see what happens on the network but we don't necessarily know who who is it from right so yeah, as long as you um adhere adhere to the rules as long as you play by the rules of the network as long as you make sure that the community is safe then i think that it's going to be a pretty profound way of saying okay well how can we solve these security issues on the network level and how can we make sure that the communication between agents is is encrypted and safe you know all of the technology to facilitate that already exists it's just a matter for us to put it all into let's say one big box and uh and make it usable yeah. so yeah that's basically the answer mm, great that's great and i see cat that you guys are making kind of your platform and your services get getting better as the this kind of ai services are coming to this world then can you explain the how your ai agent networks features evolved since your first time and uh, now we have so plenty of other ai services so it is evolved from the initial concept or did you change or did you make some better new features in this system yeah sure um i think like like i said like we're always on an internal hackathon mm -hmm. um we are always moving very fast mm -hmm. so like the initial idea of the AI agent network and, and actually our first white paper is very different from our current white paper, as you know. Mm, yeah. So yes, the AI agent network features, they have evolved since its initial concept because initially um, our network was being used by a, let's say metaverse environment with all, all these virtual AI beings to be inside that uh, closed off environment, right? Uh, virtual world. But then we said like, okay, well, we, we, we see it works. We see that these, you know, agents, they can access the blockchain, they can communicate with each other, they can transfer funds, they can work really towards something. So why don't we take it out of the box? Why don't we just pick up one of those aspects and then, um, you know, like take it out of the box? So, yeah, so we did that with Lucy, right? So that was like one of the experiments. It's like we, Lucy, we took Lucy and we, we said, let's put Lucy out in the world and let's see what, what she can really do and what she can solve and what kind of like users we can attract. And uh, yeah, that's been great. Yeah, that's great. And about the big news that happened recently, you guys have plenty of partnership with the big guys in this industry, right? Uh, you have uh, recent news about the Microsoft and you also have a partnership with the Google Cloud, right? Yes, yes, correct. Yeah, can you explain how this kind of partnership will enhance the Delicium and AGI and the AI agent network in the making new kind of decentralized AI platforms in the future? Yeah. Yes. Look, we cannot build this alone. Like, there's no way that we can um, become better than Google and better than Microsoft because they've been building infrastructure for decades, right? So we need to play with them. Um, we need to be able to utilize the best of what they got, and we need to utilize the best of what we got. Now, our philosophies are very aligned um, in most cases, especially when we're talking about Microsoft. Mm. You know, Microsoft is one of the key partners to OpenAI. They are building uh, the infrastructure to be able to uh, assist OpenAI into bringing ChatGPT and all its services to the world in a um, secure and scalable way, right? And you see that they're having trouble already. They're having trouble because you know every time a, a new model or the model is upgraded, it's much slower. Um, there are problems with network and so on. So it's a it's a continuous game of cat and mouse. But that being said, Microsoft does have um, the insights and does have the ability to help us uh, scale very fast. And on the other side, we have the knowledge, we have the insights to help, you know, companies like Microsoft and Google to also start to adopt blockchain. So it's a double-edged sword, and we receive a lot of support, um, definitely. 
So yeah, I think it's pretty fundamental for us to have these kind of partnerships. And a lot of people they're asking is, oh, it's not decentralized, uh, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, you know, not every single aspect of our lives will be decentralized, right? We need to be very, um, we need to be very cautious in, in wanting to decentralize everything that we can get our hands on. Probably that's not a smart idea at all. Uh, we need to decentralize the things that have to be decentralized and we need to build better solutions and better infrastructure for the, the, the things that don't have to be decentralized. So that's why we believe our Microsoft uh, partnership is very crucial. You know, we get access and we get a deeper connection to, to open AI through this as well. Um, we are able to leverage all of the technologies, the AI service technologies uh, that Microsoft already has built. So, you know, like if you say we are one and we are partnering with Microsoft then we become maybe 10, right? So mm, it's very, yeah, it's very foundational. I saw that you guys are looking for making a new version of the Lucy, that is Lucy V2 and Lucy V1 that is learning now is kind of the Alpha version, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. I saw kind of so many things, like you guys can check the information about the tokens and information about the blockchains in the Russi. Yes. And you guys already have kind of some specialties in this kind of AI chatbot systems. But what's your more enhancements in this Lucy V2? Yeah. So Lucy V2 will likely come out uh, towards the end of this year. Mm. And we really took care of, you know, making sure that this entire model of Lucy, right, is structured in a way that is able to interact with other agents, but also structured in a way that it's really well, um, you know, facilitating to the requirements for the needs of our users. So we just went in, we, we dropped Lucy like the first super early pre-alpha stage, uh, you know, in April. And then we started talking with our users that, hey, what do you want to see? What would be really, really useful for you? So then we had, you know, like hundreds of conversations and we realized there was one very critical and one very, very crucial aspect that Lucy could help solve our users. And that is um, kind of like automation. So for example, um, right now, Lucy version two will be able to identify triggers and it will be able to trigger actions. Right. So, for example, you can say, hey, I want to monitor Solana and whenever Solana is, you know, reaching this level, this price, I want to buy Solana. And if it goes lower than this price, I want to sell it. And if it goes higher than this price, I want to start, uh, uh, yeah, start uh, selling it. Sorry, lower, I want to buy more, higher, I want to sell it. Right. Yeah. And then you can just run that. And you can say that to Lucy, she will tell you all the ins and the outs. Okay, well, the prediction for the market is da 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 da. This is the current price level. This is the uh, possible risk you will have. If you go lower than this level, you will lose, you know, what percentage of your assets, blah, blah, blah. And then she will be able to ask you whether you want to run this. You will be prompted with a nice interface and you click run it. So then whenever that happens, what you just asked, she will perform it for you, right? So you can build trading strategies, you can um, monitor markets and so on. You can, you know, like do some kind of like interaction with protocols for, for airdrops, et cetera. So it will be, you know, like your day-to-day -day, uh, crypto activities will be able to be handled through one interface instead of having to go through like all of these clunky UI UXs, you know, going to Galaxy, going to, uh, going to, you know, this protocol, that protocol, logging into this UI, that UI, connecting your wallet, having to check the contract address, whether it's safe or not, seeing what other people say on forums, so that everything will happen in one, one space, mm. right? Hey, Lucy, help me do research on this project. Okay, what do you want to know? I want to know um, what is their total, total value locked in staking. I want to know what is the sentiment of their community. I want to know what the roadmap looks like. I want to know all of these things, right? And then Lucy can just help you do that in one interface instead of you having to uh, go around. And then you can make, you know, an investment decision, for example. Mm, yeah. Of course, it's not an investment advice, but you'll be able to gather information <laughs> yes, sure, sure. for you to be able to um, shape your decisions better. I can see that you guys are really seeking for making some real services in this blockchain scene. And 
I'm also curious about your kind of actual database of these services. Can you feel kind of improvement in the numbers or the retention times or the traffic or other data through after the announcement and after the improvement of your services? Yeah, definitely. We see a lot of new people coming in uh, that are really excited. Um, like, you know, like thousands of people coming into the community uh, every day, which oh, is great. Yeah. The, great. Amount of the amount of token holders has, has increased a lot. Um, I believe we are nearing around like 40K token holders as we speak, mm -hmm. which is not bad. Um, and then we have around 1.4 plus uh, unique wallets connected to, to Lucy. And we have, you know, a lot of people on the wait list. Um, we're, we're, we have a lot of people that are really interested. So I think that, you know, through the announcement of the new white paper, we really solidified our direction mm. and um, people start to understand, oh, okay, we now really see where Delicium is headed. We now really see the true potential of the project and of the team. And it's kind of like, you know, everybody starts to understand and people become so supportive. You know, like I was just having a space uh, the other day with like 4,000 people in it, all listening and asking, uh, asking about, about AI and asking, you know, similar questions to what you are asking, because it is indeed like that right now it's time to ask those questions. It's right now time to ask ourselves, you know, what about my privacy? What about my data? How can I make this experience more beneficial for me? Uh, should I build an agent? How can I build an agent? And so on. You know, these are the questions that we get a lot. Do you think what it looks like in the future, in like 10 years mm -hmm. from now, what does it look like, the relationship between the AI and the humans? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. What does it look like? It's a very interesting question. I think um, AI agents will probably serve as humans almost on the same level as another human could mm. or another human would. Um, that means that you will have interactions with, with artificial intelligence every day. Mm. And I'm not just, you know, talking about like these robot like figures, but as computing power, you know, accelerates, you can, you can see uh, the following, for example, like, your phone, you know, like, oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, Your phone. Uh, years ago, you know, a decade ago, um, two decades ago, it didn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like you had maybe, you know, 10 years ago, you, you didn't have the form of compute power that we have in our phones right now. And every two year, uh, this compute power, you know, like almost, you know, doubles. So right now, what we would have needed an entire house for um, to store one computer, which can only, you know, compute a couple of, of kilobytes. Right now we have a phone in our pocket, which has, you know, one terabyte of storage and 32 gigabytes of, uh, internal compute power RAM. Right. So this is going to be true for the next decade too. It's going to exponentially increase what we have now packed into a, a, a handheld device is going to be packed into something, which is like this small. Maybe, you know, like, like the size of your, of your, of your button of your shirt. So AI can be incorporated in, in a lot of things. AI can be incorporated in every single device that we have. AI can be incorporated into our clothes, even, you know, maybe in the future, we'll have some kind of functionalities, um, which are, which are need to be, um, you know, guided by AI. So I think that it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be the new, let's say, internet. It's going to be yeah, something that we need to pay attention to. We are kind of sure that the AI will be the prominent technology in the human society. Then let's conclude our interview with what do you think about Delicium's position in this era? What do you guys start doing in when the AI becomes a prominent and AI becomes the everyday life of the humans? What's your positions and what's your role? Yes, very simple. We will build the blockchain for AI and we will make sure that AI serves humanity. Mm, yeah. So you guys will be kind of the internet for the AI, right? Yes, 
Yes, yeah, correct. That's a great idea. And now I can feel why we guys need that. Because before the interview, we didn't think that, I didn't think that that kind of network is necessary and that can be happening in this world. The way we can do work is through communication. The way we can build friendship is through communication. So our words, our communication is very powerful. So to have that to be the fundamental aspect of our project is, I believe, something that everybody has to pay attention to. So I invite you to come to our Discord, to come to our Telegram um, and become part of the community and start sharing your vision uh, of your AI agents with our community. We are really looking for your new futures that you guys are looking for making in this blockchain AI network. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your time, Yannick. Thank you very much, Ethan.